Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Hello. <laughs> Today we're gonna taste a... Uh, a rockin' good tea. <laughs> I'm pretty excited. A Tell them. Yes. Welcome back to our channel. Today we're gonna taste a uh, Da Ye Shu Puar from 1980s. And this is a new member to our Supreme Tea collection. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to try this tea. If you're new to the channel, you may wanna click subscribe. At Gen Tea, we cover all things to do with fine tasting grade Chinese tea. On this channel, we'll take you behind the scenes in tea processing, tea travel into tea gardens. We cover how to brew different types of tea, how different types of tea are made, all kinds of amazing content. Click subscribe. And if you're curious about my story with the specific tea and how this tea tastes like, oh, yeah. just keep on watching. I guess start with the smell the dry leaf a bit. Wow. I'm really excited to taste this tea. Hard. Mm. It has a gen very first is very gentle. Yeah, I was gonna say when you said it's tart. not like a, a yeah. straight up. Like I actually had to smell it again. Yeah. See, oh, it has a little light tartness, a little bit mm -hmm. gentle. Tart, a little plumminess. Again, very yeah, gentle, yeah. like uh, teas we see in it has this a caliber. That fruity, often. that uh, yep. uh, citric fruits kind of notes. Mm. I'm gonna get to brewing. So you may be asking yourself, what is Supreme Tea or what do we mean by Supreme Tea? So let me try and explain it. Uh, Cause when I first got started with Gen Tea, I also struggled with this. Um, is it just a marketing term? It turns out not at all. Supreme Tea represents rare teas that are guaranteed authentic and they are the top demonstration of the tea of their kind in their category. Um, so first, let me back up to the authenticity. How do we guarantee that the tea is authentic? The short answer is Jen and Jian Li. Jian Li, with over 30 years of experience in the tea business in China, is immersed in the Chinese tea business. You want me to <laughs> she wants me to smell that and I want to smell it. Mm. Oh, the age, the smell of the age is coming off now that the guy won't have warmed up. Mm. Oh, the plummy tardiness is still there, but a little bit more subdued. Coming it's right really back. It's really interesting. Yes, coming <laughs> right back. Let you finish what you're saying. Coming right back though. So 30 years in the tea business in China, Jen Li isn't just uh, going out looking for good tea. She's helping producers make good tea. She has the credentials. Her and Jen have the credentials to taste the tea and validate its authenticity. So for example, in the Supreme Tea category, we have things like Jinjun Mei, Lao Tsong Shui Xian, Aged Puars, etc. You can check them out in the link down below. But Jinjun Mei is probably a tea that, you, that many of you are familiar with. It's a very famous black tea. Our Jinjun Mei is a Supreme Tea because it's the Jinjun Mei made by the inventor of Jinjun Mei. So it delivers everything that a Jinjun Mei is expected to and can deliver similarly with the rest of the lineup and let's dive back into this amazing 80s shupuar. Oh, wow. How would you describe that? It's really different than previously. And you might notice that I put a, a boss amount of leaves because it's an aged mm. tea, the, the older the tea is, the lighter it is because uh, all the reactions and mm. the drying and stuff. It, uh, that's why if you just measure it, you will notice it's actually bulkier. Mm. So like you mentioned, very different than the dry leaf we smelled uh, initially, which had that tar hints of tart and plummy. Now I'm getting antique, exotic antique woods. Um, it does have that woodiness there, eh? That, yeah, but like tropical woods, those really dark, exotic, and a little bit of sticky rice. Like, you know, the, the, the sticky rice. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta go back and look for sticky rice. Yeah. Like when you cook that and eat that yeah. straight sticky rice, it's really like subdued, like in the lower part of this mm -hmm. aroma. Mm -hmm. And it still have that the plummy tartness. Yes, it still has the plummy. The tartness is rounded out now and kind of mm. sinking in really, 
And smoky. Mm. Not ashy smoky. It's not lovely tobacco y. Mm. Feel it. Wow. wow. That color is striking, right? Right away. Mm. And you can see when the liquor, when it drops, like this. You can see the viscosity, the viscosity the sort of, uh, yes, thickness how it, of the liquor. You want what color? I'm going to go with yellow today. Okay. Not just because it's the fuller cup. Oh. <laughs> The aroma is really gentle, Ooh. inviting. Mm. Warming. Warming. For me, it's really huggy. Hints of that woodiness, but it's less, uh, it's less of a dark exotic wood now and more of a, an antique wood, I would say. Some leatheriness. And spiced. Like those warming, not quite a star in these, but it reminds me of those brownish, you know? Would you call this earthy? Mm, yes, I can understand earthy, but mm, complex. It's, it's really complex. It has some... Oh, be sure to use the boiling water to brew this tea. I thought of earthy because if you have, if I have to choose one of the most confusing tasting mm. notes for me is the word earthy and how people are using that. Certain teas for me is floral and creamy and cheerful. People call that earthy, and some of this, which is in my, I would call that earthy. Some people might not. So. Mm. You know what I mean? Earthy is people use that everywhere. Broad, Even green right? tea. I have people use earthy with green tea and I just don't truly understand. It. Right. But Whereas what this is delivering is that it still has that antique wood, maybe wet wood and maybe wet earth. So wet that's wood. right. So yeah. and, and we also garden. Wet. When you say wet wood, you really feel the temperature, that warm uh, tropical. I guess by tropical, right. we mean that the warmth and Steam. the humidity, mm. right, with the wood, like our mushroom log. <laughs> mm -hmm. And oh, breathing successful. over this tea. Yeah, it's deep. Breathe, really breathing over brings out a lot of the fruitiness, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the uh, subtle, it's a puar, right? So booming aroma is not really a puar thing, but there's great aromas in mm. here. Okay, that's really interesting. That is raisins, straight up. Mm. Sweet, maybe even uh, not quite fig. I would say like a maybe ah. black currant, raisiny. Like a you know, there's that bridge that spectrum. I know what you're saying. Black currant, raisin, fig. Mm -hmm. This is in the raisin black currant domain. Yeah, it's interesting because it's a cool. Oh. Mm. And emptied for a while as we taste, and it still has this ling lingering aroma. And it's not subtle. Not it's subtle. Strong. Yeah, you really smell this. Is this is something? Mm. You want to smell this? Mm-hmm. I ch I didn't chug the tea, but the speed I drink is almost like chug the tea. It's just so good and make me want to have more and more. It's a great point too. It's not. Subconsciously. It's not so okay. frowned upon with mm. Puar too. It's it's a mouthfeel tea, so it's okay to take a nice, you know, whereas a lot of times I've been really sipping it daintily, mm. also okay. I'm doing that to provoke the aroma and breathe over it. But Puar is a great tea to take a good mouthful yes. and yes. Uh, and just really feel that viscosity, the thickness of the liquor. Yeah. This is so different than the than the empty sharing pot. Yeah. Um, much more subtle. Oh, really? I found it quite the opposite, actually. Oh, really? Mm. Okay. What are you getting there? Wood. Mm. Real wood. Mm. Like you really yeah. <laughs> stuck your nose right against the cut, the 
the freshly cut wet wood. Hmm. Maybe with some moss on the bark. Yeah, mossy is a good uh, a good mossy, I would way say. to characterize how this. It's a mossy wood. Yeah, not just it's the not moss. the moss. It's the wood has some mossiness, which indicates how long the wood's been wet. It's got that long time wet wood aroma. It just reminds me how because we, we taste these and sometimes when we are grocery shopping and we say, oh, a cedar planter. And both of us just ditch the cart and walk straight and just smell the board. And we're like, oh, not so cedar as yeah, we yeah, thought. That was a disappointing <laughs> cedar planter. It was a, uh, I think that's a, maybe some of you who also love tastings and stuff who would do those weird things that we want. Oh, try a little bit to taste. Mm. Oh, try a little bit to, just to smell. Yeah, and if you don't do that, I would encourage you to just, if you're getting into tea tasting and you're wondering how people can figure out this smell, that smell, just start smelling a bunch of stuff. Uh, flowers, grasses, roses. When you're walking in the woods, pay attention to what you're smelling. These little things are gonna help you out. They, mm. they helped me out a lot. And check out a bunch of our videos too. We have some great ones on how to get, how to, how to up your tasting game. Second infusion. Were you wanting that? I was about to grab it and I'm like, she's brewing, don't grab the lid. <laughs> I feel the little motion of that. Right, the little, the um, anticipation that I better give him the lid. Right. Look at that liquor color, like deep, ruby, brown. I just brown. love, yeah. And I personally really love how it drips that slow. Elongated drip. It, yeah, it tells you about the stickiness. Wow of the tea. This time I try to make that. A little more even. Yes. And also it's a more open up. The color is deeper than yep. the first infusion. The color is deeper. The aroma is mm -hmm. um, enriched. The lid after, the, after that infusion is Oh, oh, even a little bit creamy, like a woody creamy. Yeah, yeah, that's so interesting. It has sort of the um, the high notes of uh, of woodiness, more like if uh, I don't want to say camphor, it's a little bit overused, mm. but it has sort of those floating evergreen notes more than the uh, more than the wet leaf, more than the liquor. This is really interesting. It has that hay, dried hay mm. kind of elements, like a grassy. Not a green grass, some yellow kind of a taste. Mm. And really, compared to what I smell in the guy one and the serving pot, the, the liquor per se is relatively light, I would say. Yeah, I would agree with that. Right? The, um, the sharing pot, the leaf are fairly bold. The liquor is more bold than the, than the first infusion that we smelled, the, you know, lic mm. comparing liquor to liquor. And it's just all in the liquor. Once you take a sip, there is no, you know, shyness mm. in the tea. Mm. Mm. I said I have a story with this tea, right? right. <laughs> yeah, I don't. This is going to be good because I don't even know the story. So you did say that, and you kind of owe the folks your story with this tea. Mm. <laughs> um, so first of all. Like even though we just post this tea on the website and introduced that here, it's not like uh, we just got access to this tea or stuff. All mm -hmm. the teas we sell with uh, those uh, aged ones, most of them, we mm -hmm. age ourselves. So you really uh, see us carrying, uh, you know, teas from 60s, 70s, not very often. Every now and then we might have a good source, but at least all the teas we aged teas we have on our websites are what we had at least from the 90s uh, or early 2000 before the market was flooded. Uh, so this tea is actually my first uh, Shupuar experience. Really? Yes. Um, well, I don't know. It was at home. You know what? At home we have a, at the entry in the house we had a huge teapot like you know the decoration kind of a thing a huge teapot of 
that big. And now uh, inside the teapot. Oh, a decorative teapot. Yes. Like a Yixing decorative. Yes. Okay, okay. Uh, and inside that teapot, you can open the lid and it's filled with this tea. So. So how big is this teapot we're talking? This big. <laughs> okay. Like, you know, like a 60, like pretty big, really big, a huge wow. teapot. And uh, that's what we used to just grab after we uh, have a meal and stuff. We just have, oh, we want the teapot tea, teapot tea, because it tastes good. And as mm. a kid, we used to love like, you know, like Pepsi's and uh, Coke. I was, I didn't hate it. I didn't, I didn't know anything about tasting. I didn't know anything. It's just not... Pre your tea appreciation years. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It was like not bitter but you uh, weren't uh, it opposed quite to this tea yeah it wasn't mm. anything like you know hard to drink and i drink it and it's just i know nothing but i just keep drinking that i if i needed the tea i just uh, go to the teapot and reach for this tea i didn't know the value of it either and at that time it's not as hyped compared to nowadays and not right. as real right. because tea you know the more you drink it <laughs> the less it has left for right. the future so and until later on and i try you know sometimes i go out with my mom and to other stores and stuff and try their shupur i'm like huh <laughs> that's not shupur <laughs> bar was really high right the bar is set super yeah. high by this tea yeah so that was the funny thing wow. so it's even yeah every time i see this tea this is my teapot tea the huge teapot yeah yeah tea. because that's how you guys called it in the house like, yeah let's have some teapot tea yeah. and we should tell folks if you're not familiar with um shupuar or a good i mean any tea is good after a meal tea has that mm. settling sort of feeling but shupuar for me mm. is a uh, fantastic shampoo puar in general is a great after meal yeah. tea yeah yeah and i just had a big like a big sip a big mouthful sip of this tea, and I just love it. You know, poor thick oolong is a little sip, a little sip. You have the aroma, the mm. whole thing. Poor, you have a good amount and swallow. You feel the texture, how it slides down the throat, how it interact mm. with your tongue, with your teeth. That texture is yeah. It's just delightful. It's like it's one of heavy the heavy good silk. Yeah, and it's one of the unique elements of uh, of poor. Mm. Mm. Ready? Yes. <laughs> Third infusion. Here we go. Mm, just right before. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, that's so interesting. Mm. There's something about this lid aroma that's that's a little bit volatile like um it really changes a lot mm. from cold uh, hot cold warm and quite different i don't know how to explain right now it, it's a uh, lukewarm i would say the temperature because it's been a while right. we like just refill the yeah. kettle and let it boil and this one the tea has... is still really like that wet wood that we talked about i would say but there is a different aroma on the lid that i hadn't smelled um that i can only describe as really light and volatile mm -hmm. like almost like a paint I mean, that doesn't sound very appetizing but it's not you know it's in that domain but not that i'm gonna take this over so yeah. <laughs> but try this this is so mm -hmm. interesting i smell that i was like, oh no smell no wait a sec there is a smell like it, it hits my sense like in the very late and deep part mm. yeah really light mm. almost a sweet and tart I was going like to say a sugary, dried yeah. prune yeah it's not thing. as raisiny as i had said the the previous when it was warm i really got a raisin current now it's just that lingering mm -hmm. sugariness um no i sometimes i get brown sugar from the bottom of the sharing pot this i wouldn't call it brown sugar or caramel it was more like just sugar i don't know the color is stunning the ruby ruby redness of that liquor is mm. really mm. yeah there are radiance too in real life i guess do you call this real life i think so right yeah, what we're having right now is yeah. real life. Okay, That's right. okay, okay. Even though we're on your YouTube screen, <laughs> this is our real life. <laughs> it's just 
barely, barely. This one is even lighter than that empty, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. empty serving pot. The liquor pot is, I, I call that greedy liquor. The liquor just holds it all in. And once you hint, sip it. A hint of, you know, as an aged poor, you would expect that a little bit woody, like a really gentle mm. camphor, that kind of. A, oh, yeah. Feel like a maple syrup, a warmed homemade maple syrup <laughs> warm. That woodiness. That kind of woodiness, yes. True wood. I would call that true wood. Mm-hmm. The thickness is really, really. Mm. Uh, and there is no bitter. Like the first no. infusion was light. Right, then the second and third become really, you look at the color compared to the first one, it's much deeper and you would like expect a, a strong brew or something. It's not, mm. it's, it's richer. It's, there's no increase in bitterness. There's no. even the whole thing has the weird consistency, mm -hmm. right? Mm. These teas are just so hard to describe. You just have to try it yourself. Yeah, the complexity like, is really something. The uh, it's just the whole experience. Oh, this is so delightful! This is so delightful. There's no that kind of. A <laughs> mm. You know, some people feel like if it's aged tea, it has to taste or smell like mold. Nothing, nothing. Yeah, like no, that. no, 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 no. And this no. is from the 80s. There's none of that sort of. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. The closest. It's very clean. It's yeah, aged. Super it's clean. It's not mm. any of those. Yeah, no, the flavors are clean and bright. Um, this is right now a little medicinal. Mm. Like Chinese herb medicinal. I'm gonna have to put it back. I think it's, I think it's all gone. I think I missed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't get that. Okay. Chug it, chug. <laughs> Thickness, mm. huh? The thickness is yeah. Uh, yeah, striking. Yeah, it's unbeatable. Never hesitate to do that. Maybe you, because with a cup, right? You can have a little bit sip, like how you sip oolong to do that, but never hesitate to have a good mouthful and it really pops, really pops. Yeah, and even uh, move it around in your mouth, feel that viscosity yeah. and breathe over the tea. Mm. Mm. My bottom cup is really intriguing. It's faint now. It's almost gone. I think I absorbed it all, but it was really that, um, it wasn't the same as the previous sweet sort of sweet dried fruit I was getting. It was more like, um, a little bit stinkier, like a little bit more. I don't have much smell in my sweaty, body. Sweaty, maybe sweaty. Mm. Yeah. Mine was gone too. I think I just caught it at the right moment. And you'll notice probably we're, smelling these things over and over, smell the bottom cup, smell the sharing pot over and over. The reason for that is that transient nature of it. You know, the cup is warm. There's one aroma. The cup is medium yeah. warm. There's another aroma. Yeah. So that's why we're redoing that over and over. Yeah. And, uh, you know, trying so really, to really... I, I think that's just the beauty of tasting to mm. see how it changes where something might not change. Mm -hmm. And that's the fun of it. Mm -hmm. Infusion four. Mm -hmm. um, the tea, the whole tasting experience with this tea was so much that I totally forgot I have something that I wanted to talk about. So <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to uh, catch up here. It's a little bit mesmerizing just to see the liquor and smell and taste and just focus and not doing anything else. One of the hardest thing about for us to introduce a tea, teas of this quality to you especially, is is having to talk about them. It's I know. two things. First, they're complex, they're hard to describe. But second, you taste a tea like this, almost the last thing you want to do is talk. You just want to I know, absorb I just, the I just experience. want to sit here and 
and just drink it. Yeah, just soak That's it why in. I make notes in advance of some information you might want to know that I, you know, in case I forget like I just did. Okay, I gotta better stay on top of that. Otherwise, I might taste mm -hmm. and chit chat and forgot. But one thing I wanted to talk about is in the name, this tea has Da Ye. Mm -hmm. So Da Ye is a, uh, uh, obviously it's Chinese. <laughs> what am I saying? No, it's good to say right. it's Chinese it's for a big, Chinese, big leaf, right? Yeah, Mandarin uh, pinyin of a big leaf. Uh, I found that sometimes even with advanced uh, poor tasters, they are there are some confusion about like a, a big leaf, a big tree, what, are, what mm. do they mean? Uh, so just want to say big leaf means it's big leaf doesn't, uh, there's no deduction of oh big leaf means it's from big tree. Right. No, right. big leaf only means it's a leaf and when it's a tree cultivar big tree, it could even have a small leaf uh, variant too. Mm. Uh, so, I was really confused about that when I was right. just starting to learn about tea and because um, I feel like sometimes you give you the hint as if there is a suggestion or mm. as if this implies this means that and I just wanted to say there's no implication if they said this is a big like this one this is a big leaf shu puar so means it's a big leaf shu puar it doesn't mean it's a old big tree. It might have tree, it might have bush. We don't know. It's mm -hmm. a big leaf cultivar. That's all we know. Right, right. And if you have, a, say, a puar that is a big, uh, say it's a big tree, like a sound of our label will say old tree and stuff, you know, okay, it's a tree cultivar. Is this big leaf or not? Also not necessary. They are, are right. a small They're independent leaf. things. A, totally right. independent. They're, yeah, yeah. Just wanted to say, because a lot of people don't know that uh, uh, when it's a tree cultivar, there's a still small leaves there too. Mm -hmm. And some poor mm -hmm. trees are not even drinkable. It was a, a tested uh, poison and stuff. Really? <laughs> yeah, bit, and some of them are extremely bitter. So it's not pleasant to, to even drink, even though it's in that poor tree stuff. So there's a lot of variants. Uh, I guess just take it literal. Yeah, and if you yeah. want to dive in more and learn more about this, we right. have a video that covers it pretty in depth in terms of big leaf, um, small leaf, old tree, uh, ancient tree, and all that stuff. Check out the link uh, down below for that. Yes, yes. Mm. I'm glad I get this all out to you, explain what I needed to say, and now I can just lay mm. back and enjoy the tea. really consistent infusions. Um, I think we said it every single infusion, yeah. but it's worth repeating. Um, you know, the first one, while it was light, it was still, you know, for me, it was pretty flavorful. But once you get into the second and third infusion, it was lighter, but that the profile is... I, yeah, I found that uh, the uh, aroma of the liquor, if you only smell the liquor, the aroma actually dies down. The first one has a little bit more, still very faint, but a little bit more. Then it, the aroma mm. dies down. But once okay. you sip it, yes. it's all there. Like mm. it's a, yeah. a, a little bit, how should I say, magical. It's like you have something that smells like nothing, but you eat it, it's full, full of flavor. Yeah. yeah, there's no lack Yeah, of that aroma really it. sunk into the liquor in yes. the late infusions. Yeah, mm. and it's very hard to describe. Right now, if you ask me to describe this uh, infusion, I'm like, oh, there's no notes I can pick out. It's very, very ex experiential. Experiential, Experi yeah. Experiential. It's just so yeah. incredibly thick and rounded and like, okay, I have a bad idea. Uh -oh. I'll be right back. <laughs> so, is that this tea? No, no, no. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, no, I oh, know no. what it is. <laughs> so when we're preparing the videos and stuff, we also make some tea as we're working and it's yeah, just regular tea. tea. Right? And you can see oh, it's a regular right. chupoir. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna taste it. It's a, not a fair comparison tasting, but just to say, like, if you don't know any tasting notes, so we don't wanna... I'm, I need a little... We need okay, another well, okay, infusion okay. of this so I can...
side by I side. I saved a little bit. We're gonna side by side again. It's not a. It's and it's not for to say how bad it is. Just to of say, course. a lot of times because people will feel like, oh, I cannot describe. I cannot do this. I cannot just drink. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, yeah. how do you learn tasting? Just drink. Yeah. Like how I was, I didn't know what this is. I drink it. I not when you were bad. a kid, you yeah, mean, yeah. Right? And then I drink something then it ruined again. All other shupu are for you. Yeah, it is. Teapot tea. How do you want to do it? I'm just gonna drink. I'm gonna sandwich it. You know, despite all mm. the taste, the, the, the thickness is a, right mm. away hits me off. No. Mm. You know what I mean? Yes, yeah, so still mm. a super mm. taste. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Everything is a little bit more on the nose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. This one is like water. No, I, I don't smell anything. You're right, it's really... um. But you taste the like thickness is a, mm. you know, this is water basically the kind of thing. Yeah, it's the flip. Of, it's the flip effect. Mm. This one has aroma, where this one doesn't anymore. But this one, the flavor just washes and fills your mouth. Fills and the everything. thickness and as the thickness, you mm. Slurp it's, the tea into the mouth, that whole feeling is Yeah, different. it's really tangible, the difference in the thickness. Mm. 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 Yeah, that's so interesting. Mm. Yeah. Just sound, and sometimes when you're just into one tea, so, you know, the learning experience is great, but somehow limited. When you have a comparison, you suddenly make certain mm. things pop. Yeah, it gives you a little traction, mm. a little um, sensory traction, so yeah. to speak. Stop this kind of unfair comparison. <laughs> oh boy, we're gonna get a lot more uh, infusions out of this tea. Yeah. I am uh, sure. Just want to sit and uh, drink. It's really hard to focus. And yeah, talk. we have to kind of keep things a little bit more brief for you folks on YouTube. Maybe some of you are sad, but. That's okay. Uh, in a, the links down below, there is a link to this very tea on our website. So go and check that out. Grab some for yourself. Um, we're gonna keep on brewing this until mm. it's fully spent, which is which could be quite some time. Um, wow. Um, just a quick. I don't know. <laughs> Brain is erased. <laughs> a quick recap, right? We've yeah. got um, uh, you know a super thick. Uh, antique woody um, with some raisiny black currant in the dry guy one. I mean, you want to experience every dimension of this tea that you can get your senses on. So uh, yeah, check it out in the links down below. And um, if you're if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel so you'll know when. Give the we video a like. New. We yes. had fun. We have so much fun make this kind of video, mm -hmm. and uh, your like, subscribe will really help us. Uh, Grow. Yeah, so. help us grow and subscribe, hit the bell, and until next time, keep steeping. Keep steeping. This is good. Is it? I think that's good. Was it? Okay, okay. I, I feel know. like my brain is like, uh, no, we I found I have issue like focusing on this point or the next point. I gotta say can't this. Can't remember what it's called. Hey, war. Ne war. Na war. Liu war. Liu war. <laughs> it's what like, does that mean? It's the Beijing walk. Oh yeah. Okay. It's uh, but it's like the tea equivalent. It's like uh, oh. they, they have a sit too. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. But it's not liu wa. No. They have a word for that. Beijing tan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. How do you know? You told me. Yeah, yeah, Beijing tan. Kill your spine right on side. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>